His steadfast love endures forever. His love does not quit. His love does not stop. It never ceases. Even when His people don't deserve an ounce of His love, He continues to love them with a steadfast love.
Come on, tell me what's saying.
Let's continue to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. For him. Hallelujah. Let's all raise our hands For him. to the Lord. Hallelujah. And let's offer Hallelujah. this worship unto Him. Hallelujah. For He deserves yes. to be praised. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. Yes, Lord. We welcome you in this place, oh God. Amen. Let your spirit move upon us. Thank you, Lord. Overwhelming, overwhelming with your love, mercy and grace, overtake me. Take my heart and mind in my imagination Say Overwhelm me Overwhelm me with your love With mercy and grace Mercy and grace Overtake me Overtake me, Lord. Overtake my heart and mind. See my imagination. More than we could ever ask or think. Overflow, 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 overflow. Overwhelm me, overwhelm me, 
supply, you will supply, you will supply, El Shaddai. Worship you in this place. Come on, let's just continue to worship God. Yung hindi na papagod na pagsamba, mga kapatid. For God is deserving. Whatever we do here on earth, we'll do in heaven. Kaya po ang pagpuri namin sa inyo, Panginoon, hindi mapapagod. We still have strength. We still have our, our hands, our voices. So let's continue to worship God and sing this song from all our hearts. If this is the first time you're going to hear the song, let the song minister to you. Sinasabi sa awitin, Lord, I'm amazed by your love. Church, let's just keep in the presence of God. Huwag niyo pong itihin ang katabi niyo, kaming mga nandito sa unahan, but just God, just Jesus alone, because this is for Him and this is for His glory. worship you. You dance so for me while I am unaware and you sing all around but I never hear a sound. Let me just sing again.
God, that you have given us this opportunity to truly gather for God in this anniversary. Father, we have witnessed your greatest things, Lord God. It's almost two years. Pandemic has really, really struck us, really penetrated to us. We have our share of pain. We have our share of sadness. But what we are right now, we're glorious because Jesus is with us. Amen. It's always righteous to really give thanks to the Lord. God, to truly fill this place, Lord Jesus Christ, Lord God. That truly, Lord Jesus Christ, Lord God, this is not just a mere event, Lord God, but a spirit-filled, Lord God. Father, we continue to pray, Lord Jesus Christ, Lord God, that you will outpour your Holy Spirit to each and every one of us, Lord God. Yes, Lord. That truly there's a sense of burden, Lord Jesus Christ, Lord God, to seek your righteousness and your holiness in our lives, Lord God. Father, thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father God, and we anoint our pastors, the speakers, Lord Jesus Christ, Lord God, that truly, Lord God, you will use them as a mouthpiece, Lord Jesus Christ, Lord God, that will truly touch each and every one of us, Lord God. Thank you, Father, for your greatness, Lord God. Thank you, for, thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, Lord God, for your love is forever, Lord Jesus Christ, Lord God. Your love endures forever, Lord God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. God, a mic clap offering. Come on, church. Yung malakas para sa Dios. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Once again, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can you look at the person beside you on your right side, on your left side, in your back and in your front and greet each other? Happy 14 year anniversary! Come on guys! Happy 14 years anniversary! May, may I know who are the first timer who uh, here? Meron po bang bago? May bagong attend po dito? Can you raise your hand please? Praise the Lord! Yes, thank you so much for uh, joining us in our uh, 14th anniversary of Across the Nation Christian Fellowship. Uh, as we always say, or always mention, in uh, our church, we are not uh, promoting any denomination. We don't uh, recommend any uh, sect 
or uh, religion, but we only lift up the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. His love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Once again, we'd like to remind everyone, and we thank you so much for uh, adhering to our protocols in COVID-19, wearing your face mask at all time while inside the church premises. Please, thank you. And thank you for um, in the entrance. And we have our toilets at the back. If you want to go to uh, um, the comfort room, you can have at least coffee at the back as well. And feel free po sa loob ng church. You are welcome here. And I believe all of us have a mobile phones. Can you lift up your mobile phones, every one of us, please? Right? Please move, uh, raise up, uh, lift up your mobile phones, please. All of us, please. At the back, I don't see any lifting up their mobiles. All right. Right now, the God told you to turn it off or make it on silent mode. Okay, make it on silent mode. Because why? We have a special guest this afternoon. All right, and in order for her to uh, to avoid or to uh, protect her identity, we would like to invite, uh, encourage everyone to please refrain from using Facebook Live, WhatsApp, or whatever. Na laka live pop. Okay, wag po tayo magbi video while we are. Uh, in the proper service. Okay. Thank you so much. And then, uh, today is the 14th year anniversary of Across the Nation Christian Fellowship. Sino po dito ang mahilig sa trivia? Ay, sayang naman. Wala silang hilig sa trivia. Sayang pa naman yung mga fabulous prizes namin dito. Fabulous! Yung iPhone 13, andyan na. They don't like, they don't like trivia. They don't want the fabulous prizes. Well, anyway, what is the significance of number 14 in our anniversary today? Actually, there's a lot of uh, significance, this number 14, in the Bible. First, there are three um, sets of generations of 14 here in, recorded in the Bible. Number one, sa kalakidon, is from Abraham Please, can you <laughs> number, move our uh, slide? Yeah, in Matthew 117, so all generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. From David to the deportation to Babylon, 14 generations. And from the de- deportation to Babylon to the Messiah, 14 generations. Look at the number of David, number 14. Amen? Not only that, you remember in Egypt when the Passover is of about to happen. Can you flash that screen, please? In Exodus chapter 12, verse 6, the Lord commanded the people of Israel to take special care of this chosen animal until the evening of the 14th day of the first month. Then the whole assembly of the community of Israel must slaughter the lamb or young goat at twilight. So, ibig sabihin, napaka-significant talaga ng 14. And not only that, Isa pa, sabi dito, on the 14th day of the first month of 30, 30 AD, Jesus Christ, God, manifested in the flesh, the only begotten Son of God, Father, and the Lamb of God to take away the sin of the world, was crucified, sorry, <laughs> was crucified as the perfect sacrifice to save mankind from the sin. That, on Passover, completed His ministry in the flesh. Accordingly, Next, please, sorry. Jesus died, therefore, on the 14th Nisan. So again, let's give a round of applause of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Savior. And not only that, last but not least, this is the most important part of the ministry of Jesus Christ. Number 14 again. Any guess? Publish prices, iPhone 13. No one? In John 14. Jesus said, what he said, can we all read it together in one, two, three. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. Amen. Jesus Christ is the only way to our salvation. So come on, brothers and sisters. Once again, can we give a round, a big hand of applause to our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ.
And now, wag natin patagalin. Heto na. Alright. An enthusiastic and English Bible teacher whose passion is to know God and serve Him for His glory. She has been in Bahrain for over seven years and has taught in over 35 foreign countries. She also likes to cook, playing golf, and she found another home of family here in Across the Nation Christian Fellowship. Amen. She also writes and directs a drama. Please all welcome our teacher for this afternoon, Teacher Diane. Well, good morning. Woo. Let's try that again. Good morning. What an honor and a pleasure it is to be here with you this morning for the 14th anniversary. Such a sunny day and an awesome way to begin worshiping the Lord here today, this afternoon. Let's give the Lord a good hand of, round of applause. And I want to just take a moment and pray. Father, we thank you for the words that we sang. Thank you that it jumps right off of the pages of the, of the monitors and right into our hearts, God, that your love, your great love endures forever. We ask you, Lord, to fill this place with your presence in a way that we've never imagined before. We ask you, God, to open our hearts, to give us ears to hear that we wouldn't just hear your word and go away unchanged, but that you would transform us through the power of your truth. God, that we would know you in a way we've never known you before. Make your presence felt and move in a mighty way through this message. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thanksgiving. Yesterday was Thanksgiving. A beautiful holiday in American culture set aside to thank God for who he is and for what he's done. It's a time for family. It's a time for celebration and lots of great food. But more than that, it's a time to remember God and all the times that he's been faithful. Well, today is a great celebration day too. It's a beautiful day set aside by the ANCF family to thank God for who he is and for what he's done. A day to celebrate all of the exciting things that he's doing to build his kingdom, to commemorate and to celebrate all the ways that he's been faithful, the ways he guided, the ways he provided, the ways he's overcome, the ways he's made a way when there seemed to be no way the ways he's healed, the ways he's rebuilt and restored and redeemed in this church with this people, the ways he's shown us that his great love endures forever. Let's take a look at Psalm 136, verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let's say it again together, shall we? Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. For how long? Ultimately, this verse reveals so much about God that all we can do is stand in awe and applaud. God's love truly does endure forever. And this morning, I invite you on a journey to explore God and his love and the impact on humanity and each one of our lives. God has a great plan for his kingdom and for each and every one of us. If we want to know what he's doing, we have to know who he is. 
And so we begin that God is eternal and his dominion, his reign is eternal. Let's take a look at Psalm 145, 13. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. He existed before time and space. He spoke the world into being. Imagine that. The universe created with a whisper of God's breath. Imagine that power, that infinite power and creativity. It's awesome. And he did it out of love because he is love. God is love. We hear that so often. But it's more than just one of his attributes, like sovereignty. Love is the word he chooses to define himself. And it's the way that he chooses to show us who he is, his nature, his character, so that we can know him and understand him. He was loving before time and space existed and before humanity was called forth by the power of his spoken word into existence. There is wonder And great comfort in that. His dominion never ends. And he will reign from everlasting to everlasting. Colossians 1.6 reminds us. For by him all things were created. In heaven and on earth. Visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. Nothing exists beyond him. There's no power that is greater than he is, that is more supreme. There's no authority that has more control. He is the one true and only living God. And this awesome God has a purpose. Throughout the Bible, God speaks very poetically to us using illustrations so that we can understand, so that we can imagine and make connections to our own lives. Most importantly, he does this so that we'll remember. On the night that he died, remember that Jesus took bread and he broke it. And what did he say to his disciples? This is my body broken for you. Now, that's an interesting thing. While they were eating, he took a piece of bread and he broke it in half so that they could see it. And then he said, this is my body broken for you. Now, bread was something that would have been on the table at every meal, kind of like rice. And he knew that every meal, without exception, they would take that bread and they would break it. Here in the Middle East, you know, we almost do it with every bite. Right? You break the bread for every bite, not just once. So he wanted them to remember every time that bread was broken, they would remember his body broken for them, for their redemption. What a beautiful way for God to use a simple thing to remind them constantly of his great love and sacrifice for them. And so when he says this, he wants his followers to remember and he wants it to teach them. He wants it to show them every time they eat or break a piece of bread that his death and his resurrection transforms their lives. So that's the power of a simile or a metaphor. Perhaps you remember some of the beautiful illustrations God uses in the Bible to teach us. Now, this is the English teacher in me. But a simile is a comparison using like or as. So we are like sheep. This is a simile. I'm as fast as a buzzing bee. That's a simile. And a metaphor doesn't use like or as. It uses is. So it would be something like God is a strong tower. And so when God uses these similes and these metaphors in the Bible, again, this is poetry, He wants us to be able to imagine what he's talking about and remember it, and more importantly, to connect it to our own lives and what we already know. So he uses sheep, and he uses a lost coin, and he uses a fortress. He uses things that people can know and imagine, see and touch, 
to communicate something that's beyond what they would be able to understand otherwise. And he uses this same kind of imagery for himself. He says, I'm a door. I'm the gate. I'm a strong tower. I'm a hiding place. Are you getting some images in your mind? I hope you are. In my female mind, my limited mind, I'm not really able to comprehend God's protection. But when he says that he's a strong tower, when he says that he's a fortress, that I can imagine. And even though he's so much further beyond that in his protection, it gives me something that I can remember and hold on to. And that's the point. He wants to bring himself into perspective through these illustrations. Proverbs 18.10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. So he wants you to remember whenever you see a strong tower, his protection, his love so much greater beyond that. And he is your fortress. He's your strong tower. He's your safe place. Again, that's an image we can hold on to, something that we can comprehend and understand when we're in struggles in a tangible way. You know, a trophy serves a similar purpose. This is just a simple trophy. It's a piece of metal or glass, and it's meant to serve as a reminder, a testimony of something that's been achieved or accomplished or recognized as important so that we will remember. It's a symbol. Did you ever imagine God's trophy case? Some people like to have a trophy case in their living room, in their office, to show off all the things, like I said, they've accomplished or the things. Did you ever imagine what God's trophy case would look like? Infinite. Omniscient. God is omniscient. That means that he's all-knowing. God's omnipotent. That means he's all-powerful and his influence is unlimited. God is omnipresent. That means he's everywhere all the time. What trophy could he possibly have to celebrate and commemorate his greatness? It's hard to imagine, isn't it? What trophy could serve as a reminder of his mercy and his care? of his power, of his provision, of his love. Well, let's take a look at Psalm 136. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, For his steadfast love endures forever. Nothing is beyond him, like we said, above him. He is supreme. Give thanks to him alone who does great wonders. For his steadfast love endures forever. To him who by understanding made the heavens. For his steadfast love endures forever. To him who spread out the earth above the waters. For his steadfast love endures endures forever to him who made the great lights why help me out here for his steadfast love endures forever he created the sun to rule over the day why the moon and the stars he created to rule over the night How long? Forever. Forever. So when we see the moon and the sun and the stars and all the beauty of creation, we remember these are reminders from God that his steadfast love endures forever. We see a description here of God's creativity how he made the heavens, how he spread the earth above the waters, how he made the stars and the sun and the move. Imagine the awesome 
creativity of God as you behold his creation. But imagine the awesome, magnificent creation of God as you look around this room, too. In love, he created this magnificent universe. He could have created one flower. One flower with a beautiful scent would have been enough. But he created hundreds of thousands, if not millions of varieties of flowers that all open differently, have different shades of color, have different scents. It's so awesome to think about the creativity and the power of God and his creation. And he did this out of love. It's a glorious array of countless flowers so that when we see them, we would understand his love. But as marvelous as creation is, the sun, the moon, the stars, the flowers, animals, the sea, that's not the trophy God would choose to put in his case. I don't think he'd put a warthog on his trophy shelf, as magnificent as a warthog is, and it's a really cool animal. I don't think he'd put a warthog on his shelf or a star on his shelf to show his magnificence. No, for that he created humanity. All creation reflects the glory of God. But when he created man, he had something special in mind. He created human beings to bear his likeness and to shine his glory. He chose humanity as his trophy. Think about that for a minute. If God had a trophy case, you would be in it. I heard, I heard one amen. amen. <laughs> Love beyond imagination and comprehension, honestly. As we were singing about how amazing his love for us. You, you can't help but tear up and cry because it's so beautiful and so awesome. We'll continue with Psalm 136. And this takes a little bit of a darker turn in the psalm as we take a look at the testimony of God's miracles in Egypt, how he divided the Red Sea, how he set his people free from Pharaoh and from captivity. And again, it's a little bit darker than when we were talking about creation, but it's awesome nonetheless. To him who struck down the firstborn of Egypt, for his steadfast love endures forever, and brought Israel out from among them, for his steadfast love endures forever. With a strong hand and an outstretched arm, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea in two. Why? Exactly. And he made Israel pass through the midst of it. Why? And he overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea. And to him who led his people through the wilderness... Psalm 136 is a testimony of God's miracles. He reminds us of all the things that he did for his people. Why did he set his free, people free from captivity? To show them his love so they would remember. Why did he defeat Pharaoh? Because his love endures forever. And he had a plan and a purpose for their lives. I'm sure that journey wasn't comfortable. I'm sure that journey wasn't pleasant. But it, had it not happened, we wouldn't have this awesome testimony of what God has done and just how magnificent he truly is. Moses, what a situation, what a life to contemplate. I want you to imagine if midwives were appointed, in fact, commanded to kill infant children of your ethnicity to wipe your race out of any memory of existence. It's a horrible thing to contemplate, isn't it? But Pharaoh had that plan, and he was determined to carry it out on the infant children. But God had a greater plan, and he even used Pharaoh's own household to carry it out. 
Now a man from the house of Levi went and he took as his wife a Levite woman. And the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. When she could hide him no longer, she took a basket made of bulrushes and she daubed it with budamen and pitch. Now, I don't know if you know what budamen and pitch are, but they're things that they use to tar a roof to hold the shingles together. And she put it on the bottom of the basket so that it would float. So that when she put Moses in it to send him up the river or down the river, he wouldn't sink and die. Moses had a smart mom. She took the basket and she made sure it could float and she set her son in it, entrusting his life to God. Imagine yourself in that situation. She put the child in and she placed it among the reeds by the riverbank. And his sister stood at a distance to know what would be done to him. Now, the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river. Just so happens she was bathing at exactly the time that Moses comes floating by. Isn't God awesome? (laughs) The timing is magnificent. She came down to the bathe at the river while her young woman walked beside the river. And she saw the basket among the reeds. And she sent her servant woman, and she took it. Now, let's see what happens next. When she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, he was crying. She took pity on him and said, this is one of the Hebrew's children. And then steps in the sister of Moses. Shall I go, she says to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Somebody's got to feed Moses, right? So the sister says, shouldn't we get a woman to feed him? And Pharaoh's daughter says to her, go. Now, where do you think that young child is going to go? To her mother. Smart. Catch the irony here. God worked it out that his own mother would nurse him and feed him. So the girl went and she called the child's mother and Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child away and nurse him for me and I will give you wages. Not only did God work it out so that Moses' own mother could feed him and nourish him and not be separated from him, but she got paid for it. That's what I call exceedingly abundantly more than we can ask or think, right? (laughs) So the woman took the child and she nursed him. And when the child grew older, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. She named him Moses because she said, I drew him out of the water. A trophy of God's grace. That's what Moses is. A trophy of God's mercy and care and provision. A testimony of his love. Now, this image of God drawing his servant out of destruction can be found in another place. God drew Moses out of the water, out of the pit of destruction, out of Satan's scheme. And he does this also in the life of David. David was a shepherd boy with seven older brothers. I'm sure they were stronger. Perhaps they were more handsome. David was the the youngest one. But God chose him to anoint as king, the littlest brother. And as you can imagine, Saul was not very pleased about it. He began to hate David and actually planned to kill him. David was in his household. This is a picture of Moses. What God did to draw him out of the water. And as David is playing the lyre, Saul has the idea to kill him. He's playing the lyre, by the way, to calm him and relax him. And Saul still gets the idea. A harmful spirit from the Lord came upon Saul as he sat in his house. And with his spear in his hand, as David was playing the lyre, Saul sought to pin David to the wall with a spear. But David eluded Saul so that he struck the spear into the wall. And David fled and escaped that night. 
Imagine yourself in that situation. Here you are playing a musical instrument, trying to relax someone, and they throw a spear at you. I'd say it's time to leave. It might be a, a hint. But God chose David. Now let's talk about Saul for a minute. I don't know if you've ever considered Saul and his name and how he became king, but this is a really fascinating thing. Again, God, God gives us these fascinating things. As you read scripture, it becomes more and more and more exciting as you see the plan of God unfold. The people of Israel had a king, and it was God. And he led them, and he guided them, and he provided for everything they could have ever wanted or needed, exceedingly or abundantly so. But they looked at other nations and said, you know, those countries have people wearing pretty stuff. We don't have that. You know, those countries have these big tall guys that look powerful in battle to ride out in front of them. We don't have that. No, you have God. (laughs) Can you imagine? But they said to Saul, and it broke Saul, excuse me, Samuel, it broke the prophet Samuel's heart because they rejected God as king. The people said, excuse me, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. This is in 1 Samuel, I think, 19. And they said, no, but there shall be a king over us that we may also be like other nations and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. And when Samuel heard all the words of the people, he repeated them in the ears of the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, obey their voice and make them a king. Samuel said to the men of Israel, go every man to a city. Can you imagine how much that must have hurt the heart of God and his prophet to hear the people say, we want want a king who's a man who looks tall and handsome and can ride a horse in front of us. It's really tragic. And you know, they chose really poorly because on the day that Saul was anointed, he was so scared, even though he was big and tall looking, he was hiding in the luggage. He had to drag him out, terrified. And Saul was also not the kind of king that God was for them. He didn't provide for them. He made poor decisions. He didn't obey God even in some of the simplest things. And his heart was not right. And so the people didn't have peace. But you know what the name of Saul means? It means asked for. God chose for them a king that means asked for because they rejected him. And they asked for a man to lead them. And God didn't leave them in that bad decision. God anointed David. He knew that he had a shepherd's heart and that he would lead his people to replace Saul. But as I said before, Saul was not pleased about that. And after trying to kill him with a spear, he had some other plans. So I I want us to think about that for a minute. I want us to think about that situation with Saul. Because God always chooses best. God always has in mind for us far beyond what we can think or imagine. C.S. Lewis said, it's, it's like we're splashing around in a mud puddle and God has planned for us a day at sea on a yacht. We have to trust God because we can't imagine what good things he has in store for us. Don't settle for the mud puddle. Are we people that Think about the outward appearance. We want to look good. We want to be stylish. We want to seem like we're strong or powerful or smart or whatever it is we have in our minds. God looks at the heart. God wants us to have a heart to know him. We may be in the eyes of the world and even in our own eyes, weak, short, not the smartest person in the room. But if you have a heart for God, you're so much better off than someone who looks the part whose life is filled with emptiness. It's just an appearance of what they want you to think that their image is. It's easy to pretend, but God wants our hearts. 
So as I said, Saul was jealous of David. He was desperate to hold on to his crown. So he tries to destroy him. So David departed from there and escaped to the cave of Adullam. And when his brothers and all his father house heard it, they went down there to him. And everyone who was in distress and everyone who was in debt and everyone who was bitter in soul gathered to him. And he became commander over them. The king that they needed who would help heal them. And so as we look at this, what we see that God allows suffering in the life. Imagine hiding in a cave. You're you're a young man hiding in a cave because the king is trying to kill you with his entire army. It's not a comfortable situation. And God did not allow this situation in David's life because he's vengeful or wrathful or he didn't care about him. No, he wanted him to recognize God had a greater plan. And even if the suffering and the trial and the persecution was difficult, God's love endures. He provided for David in the caves. And I'm sure that when David was in the cave, he wasn't sure what God was going to do, but he had faith that God's love would endure and that he would overcome. We can see this in the life of David When we serve God, it's not always easy. We're comfortable. Oftentimes we're persecuted. Oftentimes there are challenges. There's trials. There's struggles. There's battles. But like David, we can trust in God. God's love endures forever. Endured in the life of David. It endured in the life of Moses. And David is a trophy of God's grace a testimony of his love. In Psalm 18, 16 through 19, he sent from on high and he took me, David says, while he's hiding in the cave. He drew me out of many waters. It's the same image that we have from Moses. He rescued me from my strong enemy and from those who hated me because they were too mighty for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a broad place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. David is a great testimony about the beauty of God, his provision, his protection, and his love. He's a trophy of God's grace. God had a plan of salvation for David. He drew him out of the pit of his destruction because he delighted in him. Say it with me. God's love endures forever. Now, there's a woman named Corrie Ten Boom. I don't know if you've ever heard of her. She's living, and she was taken to a concentration camp with her family because there was another man in history who wanted to wipe out an entire race of people. And she was in this consecration camp, a horrible place. She had lice. And she was complaining to her sister. She's a young woman, actually kind of a young girl, complaining about the lice and how horrible it was to have lice in in her hair and how itchy it was. And there was no cure for it because the soldiers kept them in this concentration camp. And she had a Bible. They had found a Bible, and they were keeping it hidden. And she was leading Bible study with other ladies with this Bible in this consecration camp. And then the soldiers came in to search, and she was sure they were going to find the Bible and all of them would be killed. And then the soldier walked in, and he saw they had lice. And he said, I'm not going in there. And they continued their Bible study. And she said, I didn't imagine it, but I thank God for the lice. (laughs) <laughs> what, a, what a testimony of that. What a trophy of God. Sometimes the hardest situations, we just really don't, why lice? Why? It's horrible, right? But that was her protection that God allowed so that they continue the Bible study and none of the soldiers would enter. It's a beautiful testimony of the power of God. Can we learn to trust God for things like lice in our lives? Most of the stories of the Bible are testimonies of the love, 
the care, the protection, the power, the mercy of God, and his plan for the lives of his servants. Esther, Abraham, Isaiah, Ruth, Lazarus, Peter. They're trophies of his grace. He brought them through trials. He saved them from enemies. He saved them from themselves most of the time. Trophies of his grace. And they aren't just characters from a story. They're testimonies of his love. They're the way he chooses to show who he is and the power that he has. And as I look around this room on this 14th anniversary, I see some trophies of his grace in this room. Yeah. Servants of a loving God, beautiful people who've suffered and have persevered, who testify about God's awesome provision and protection and power and grace and love. I see Sister Chi. I see Brother Marlon, Pastor Otto. I see Sister Jonah with her cool shoes. (laughs) Brother Anthony with his guitar. Trophies of God's grace. Amen. Let's... God has a plan of salvation for each one of us. God drew each and every one of us, or he wants to if we'll let him, out of a pit of destruction. He saves us because he delights in us. There's a funny thing about pits. We either fall in or we get pushed in or we go leaping in with our own foolishness. I don't know which (laughs) has happened to you. But regardless of the difficult situation we're in, God has a greater plan and he has a purpose. And he draws us out of the pit of that destruction because he delights in us and he wants it to become a testimony to the rest of the world of his love. How long does God's love endure? Forever. He communicates his love not by sparing us from trials, not by shielding us from difficulties, He does it by bringing us through them, by helping us overcome them and having victory over them so that we can testify about his power and give hope to others. So let's look at Ephesians 5, 1 through 2. God is love and he wants us to walk as he did. Ephesians 5, 1 through 2. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. God loved us way before we were even created. Jesus loved when it didn't make sense. He loved us when we were still sinners, not after we cleaned ourselves up and tried to look good for God, right? Most people are are just just trying to do what they can to look good for God. And God loved us while we were still sinners. He said, come as you are. I will make you clean. You can't make yourself clean, no matter how hard you try. Jesus obeyed when it seemed illogical, impossible, and quite honestly, pointless. Jesus loved those who seemed worthless, and he redeemed their lives by his blood and by his death on the cross. God's love endures forever. This is the kind of love the world needs to see. This is the testimony that a hurting world needs to hear. God is love, which means there's hope. God is love, which means there's faith. God is love, which means that Jesus is enough. In the lives of Moses and David, God was enough. In your life, is God enough? If you don't believe he is, he is. God's love endures forever. And most of the time, I don't know you, but most of the time I feel like people think God is going to use them when they look perfect. That the best way to communicate the love of God is to to look perfect, you know, like Saul. To, To act perfect, to look perfect, to be perfect, to be what people think a Christian should be. And so 
There are many times in our lives, in my own life in particular, where God reminded me that this is not always the case. The world does not need our perfection. I remember once our church was looking for some ladies to lead a Bible study. And actually, they just wanted them to host. They had teachers. They just wanted some ladies to show some of hospitality, open their house, serve a few little light snacks, and let people come in. No lice necessary. <laughs> And I was doing that, and at that point in my life, my only domestic quality was that I lived in a house. So I figured if I could do it, anybody could do it. So I invited three or four ladies over and their husbands, and we had a a chance, and I showed them some real simple ways that they could take simple everyday things and make them look like they're really cool, hard-to-make snacks, fancy snacks. So one of the things I showed them was they have bread in a container, It's not popular here, but it's popular in America. It's in like crescent rolls or things like that. And you just kind of pop it out of the container and you put it in. But you can tell it's not homemade bread. So what I showed them was if you change the shape, form it into a different shape, put a little bit of egg white and some sesame seeds, and now it looks like homemade bread. looks like you've spent all day in the kitchen making homemade bread for your guests. Wow. So they watched what I did. They were, oh, that's amazing. I, I know, it's quite simple, but it's pretty cool. And they went to the other room, and I was so happy and delighted with myself and my happy little home. And then I put the bread in the oven, and I had the heat on too high. And as I turned from washing the pan, I looked over at the oven, and there was literally a wall of flame. All the bread was on fire. And I, I looked over, there was a wall separating the kitchen and the living room, but it had an opening. So it's like, if I can avoid the opening, if I can get that flaming bread out, toss it in the sink, I can do another one before they know. So that was my plan. But you know, when you have fire and it hits oxygen, guess what happens? The flame grows. So as I pulled out that pan that had a three inch flame, it turned into a six inch flame. And at that point, all I had to do was toss it in the sink and douse it with water. It would have been out. And maybe they would have just been a little bit of smell smell from the smoke. But all of a sudden, I pictured, I was on the third floor of an apartment building, and I pictured the fire hitting the little dish towel that I had and then hitting the curtains and then the whole room lighting on fire and then the fire trucks coming and people that are throwing their children from the upper floors down to the fire. It's all I could imagine. And so I didn't know what to do. So I just stood there with a pan and I shouted, fire, fire, fire. And everyone came running from the other room and they looked at me and I looked at them and the bread was on fire. And one of the ladies just kind of blinked and she took it and she put it in the sink like I had the original plan to do. And she put the water on it and it went out with a little fizz of smoke. No fire trucks, no babies being launched over the balcony. I said, I think we'll forget about the bread this evening and we'll do some other snacks. Well, there was my perfect demonstration destroyed. My wonderful plan to encourage these ladies to open their homes for hospitality ruined. I thought, they'll surely never. I told them it was easy, and obviously it's not so easy. I was like, they're never going to open their houses for a Bible study. So we were eating the snacks later in the evening, and... I finally, there was an uncomfortable silence. I finally just had to say it. Okay, I know, I know. I said it was easy. It's not easy. Now you're never going to do it. And you know what those three ladies said? On the contrary, if, <laughs> if, if that's how you cook and you're doing we can do that. We, could, we, we would never do anything that stupid. <laughs> and I, I often wonder when I look by that night, back that night, if the bread had turned out perfectly, may they have said, wow, that's so great, and I could never do it that way. And so I'm not going to open my home. It's kind of embarrassing to think about that story, to be honest, my own foolishness. But at the same time, what I realized was those ladies didn't need to see my perfection. They needed to see that, you know, I'm human. I make mistakes. There is one Savior, and it's not me. And it's, by the way, not you either. And so one of those things that I remember is 
God works in and through our lives. He's going to work in our lives before he's going to work through us. But he works in and through our lives to show the world who he is. And so he shines through our insecurities. He shines through our weaknesses. He's not asking us to hide them and pretend they don't exist. He's asking them to bring them to him and let him work through them and overcome them. God uses us for his glory and we become trophies of his grace because he redeems our failures. He pulls us out of the pits of our own destruction, out of our own weakness and sin, and he redeems us for his glory. Let's take a look at John. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You are also to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love from one another. God is love. It's the way he chooses to define himself and to show us his character. And he also wants for love to be the defining characteristic of his followers. So if you want to know him, then you will know him as love and you will follow him and walk in him as love. And then others will know that you know him. See how that works? It's beautiful. It's by his love that we know him. And it's by love that we make him known. God wants Christ to dwell so richly in our hearts that we're filled to the full measure of all the goodness of God. To know God, to trust God like you never have before. In new and amazing ways, he wants to work in and through your life. He wants to do things with your life that you can't even imagine. Exceedingly, abundantly beyond what you can ask or think. Ephesians three seventeen through 19. Why does God want to do that? Why does he want us to understand his love? So that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith. That you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth and know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. God wants for you abundant life. He wants you to be confident that nothing, no problem, no situation, no experience, no person can separate you from God's great love. Amen. Romans eight thirty seven and 39. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. If we follow Christ, if we're trusting in him for our salvation, there is nothing that can come against us that will prosper or that will stand. He's overcome it all. I'm sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, or things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. God wants you to be confident so that you know you have eternal life. John 10.10, 10, I write these things who believe in the name of the love of God, so that you may know. I write these things to you who believe in the name of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, right? That you may know you are loved, that you may know him, that you may know where you're going for eternity, and that nothing can compare to him, nothing can surpass him, and nothing can separate you from him. Amen? It will take... As I think about the celebration of, of this anniversary, 14 years, as I think about the testimonies of the trophies of grace in this room, it will take us eternity to thank him for what he's already done. And he has so much more in store. He has so much more planned. So let's take a look as we finish up Psalm 136. It is he who remembers us in our lowest state, for his steadfast love endures forever. And he rescued us from our foes. Why? Amen. 
He gave, he gives good food to all flesh. So we can give thanks to the God of heaven for his steadfast love endures forever. Before we finish, I just want to take a quiet moment. Maybe there's somebody sitting in the room and you haven't realized that you could follow Christ in this way. This would be the time for you to just offer up a simple prayer in your heart. Maybe you're saying to yourself, you know, I haven't, I haven't been trusting God. I've, I've, I've been trying to look perfect. I've been trying to seem like I follow the part. This would be a good time for you to just surrender your heart to him once again. Maybe you're, you need some increase of your faith. You're facing a difficult circumstance. Maybe you've experienced something really awesome and you want to celebrate. This is just going to be a quiet time. We're just going to have a quiet time for us to give thanks to God in your own life, in this church, in this beautiful universe that he created. Let's just take a moment and we'll thank God. Lord, I know that I have sinned and fallen so far short of your glory. So I say, Lord, I I trust in your shed blood on the cross. And I say, God, forgive me for my sins. I receive you. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. God, forgive me for my lack of faith for trusting in my own strength, my own abilities, my own power. I have fallen so far short. But you, God, are glorious, so I surrender my life to you. I give myself to you, God, and I say, have your way. Let me be a living sacrifice to you. God, in my own strength, I can do nothing, but with you, all things are possible. So, God, we we thank you for what you've done. We would just cry out, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for the way that you've worked. Thank you, Jesus, that you are enough. Thank you, God, for the ways you have provided and protected. We love you. We honor you. We worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. So I don't know if you think of yourself as a trophy. You're probably better looking than this thing. But you are a masterpiece. And you get to be a masterpiece and a work in progress at the same time. So let's echo it out. In my sorrow, God's love. In my joy, God's love. In my struggles, God's love. When I need his protection... When I feel there's no hope, when I have overcome Satan and all his schemes, when I see his face, why does God protect and provide for ANCF? God's love endures forever. Why does God protect and provide for you? God's love endures forever. Let's finish where we started. Psalm 136. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures. And now we have a special song. I was driving on the freeway, meditating about Moses and David and these verses, and God gave me this song. So as a celebration of your anniversary and a celebration of God's testimony and grace in our lives, I'd like to share this song with you. So if the worship team would come. Everybody ready?
I just want to share a little testimony with you. When I was asked to give the message for this beautiful service, I didn't know the theme. So isn't that a cool testimony that God gave the song and the idea for this message before? It's just, he works through all things and all ways for those who are called according to his purposes. Beautiful. Good afternoon everyone and uh, happy anniversary po sa ating lahat. And let's proceed now to our uh, tithes and offering, our giving. But before that, uh, I would like to share a word. Um, can you post it, Ate? Um, based on Luke 6, uh, chapter 6, verse 38, Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap. For with measure you use, it will be measured to you. Love is displayed in selflessly giving to others, and the ministry in which we are engaged should manifest the sacrificial grace, compassion, and kindness that Christ has shown towards us. In that, while we were yet, sit- yet sinners, Jesus died for us. His kindness towards us can indeed be described as good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. For by grace we have been saved, and by grace we have, been, we have received many precious promises which are ours by faith in Christ. So let's close our eyes and bow our head. Let's pray for our uh, tithes and offering. Lord, uh, we thank you for this day uh, that you've given us the provision, Lord, uh, for this church, O oh God. The 14 years, Panginoon, um, you've, been to, you've been with us, O oh God. Uh, thank you for your blessing. Thank you for Jesus Christ who died on the cross, who uh, give his life uh, for us, Panginoon. Lord, we pray for our uh, tithes and offering. Uh, with this, O oh God, uh, may you bless the people uh, working in the in your kingdom. At the same time, O oh Lord God, uh, may you bless the companies that you're using for us to be blessed, O oh God. May we also pray for our brethren who are struggling right now uh, in terms of their jobs, in terms of their finances. Lord, we declare blessing and healing financially to everyone, O oh God. We thank you, God. We thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everybody say, Amen. This will come back to you. Good measure, good measure. Press down, shaken together, and running over. Give, and it will come back to you. When you give, give to the Lord. And when you give, Narito na ang masaya at magulong AN. Paka naman daw dyan para sa ating mga men's ministry. Naghanda. Ang siyaman, tuon ng tagpo 
ang mga magigiting na kalalakihan sa isang simbahan na kung saan ang Diyos ang pinapapurihan sa pangunguna ng mga dalubhasang mananayaw gaya ng maneuvers, street boys, universal motion dancer, at ng BTS. Tingumiga! Apat na taong pinag-aralan. Dugo at pawis ang pinagdaanan. Isang natatangi at di matatawarang pagganap. Hangad nami sa aming mga indak, kayo ay may matutunan. Ito ang grupo ng mga halalakihan. Yes!
Amazing! Hallelujah! Sige, mag-recover po muna tayo dun sa napanood natin. <laughs> Palakpakan naman po natin ang ating men's ministry. Hallelujah! Napakagaling. Pinaghandaan at talagang um, they really prepared for it. Blood and sweat. <laughs> Thank you so much, men's ministry. Ayan, nakakatuwa that uh, our, you have graced this anniversary with your such special talent. Ayan. Alright, so now we're gonna be proceeding to our next, um, an- for a few announcements. May we call on Sister Chi for our part two. Of course, this is only the part one and I know that overflowing joy right now in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. Asayo din daw. Who could have imagined na this year we are going to celebrate our anniversary? Hindi lang through clusters, but we will all be together. Amen? So, um, indeed, joy is overflowing in this place because of God's enduring love. So, um, this uh, God's love should not be contained only within us or only within our church, but it has to be shared. Amen? So, uh, the second part of our anniversary, we are going out. We are going to share God's love, God's faithfulness, and the Word of God. Amen? So we would like to, uh, to invite all of you, if you would like to join us, um, the second part of the program, um, if you have not registered yet, you can leave or give your names to the registration ministry outside so that we can include you in the groupings. Amen? So see you after, uh, during the second part. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yeah, and so register lang po tayo so we can um, all join together for the city ministry. Amen. Pastor? Sasayaw na rin ako. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Another round of applause. Are you for God's glory? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Truly, uh, God is good. Hallelujah. And uh, in a simple celebration, I, I believe that uh, God is uh, 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 is overwhelmed, oh, and He's so so glad that His people come together to celebrate the goodness and the faithfulness of God in this ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, you know, while uh, I'm listening to the message uh, uh, this afternoon, and at the, uh, at the introduction, our uh, teacher Diane said that uh, the universe was created by just a whisper from God. Amen? Amen. And maybe some of you have heard already about the Big Bang Theory. You know about that? Who believe in the Big Bang Theory? No. Nobody? No. Oh. But today I realize that there is truth in Big Bang Theory. You know what? When, when God whispered, and then bang! Everything, everything was created. Amen? So that's the Big Bang Theory. Amen? So you, you should believe in the Big Bang Theory. Okay? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Anyway. <laughs> so, uh, in, uh, by this moment, I, I just want to uh, uh, appreciate, to give this appreciation to our church. At, at the celebration of 14th ANCF Church Anniversary. Thank you for imparting God's message of salvation and encouraging us to share the love of Christ. As it said in Matthew 25, 21, his master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. May I call on Sister Diane? Uh, video off, please. <laughs> Camera off, please. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Diane. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So, Sister Jan, can you uh, just step forward here and we'll pray for you? Can we stand up and pray for Sister Diane? 
just uh, extend our hands to her for blessing us also this uh, after, uh, afternoon. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you once again, Lord, hallelujah, for this wonderful servant that you have sent this afternoon, Lord, hallelujah, to be with us, to celebrate with us, Lord, hallelujah, and to impart the message that you have put in her heart, oh God, hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for that word. We thank you for that message, Lord, hallelujah, and truly, Lord, that your love endures forever, oh God, hallelujah. Lord, from creation, Lord, to the wilderness, Lord, hallelujah, to the promised land, Lord, until now, O oh God, hallelujah, your, great, your love endures forever, O oh God. Lord, we thank you, hallelujah, for that f- powerful message that uh, has been delivered by our sister Diane, O oh God, hallelujah. And Lord, we continue to speak blessing upon her life, Lord, hallelujah. Lord, let your hedges of protection be upon her, hallelujah, and uh, bless the work of thy hands, O oh God, hallelujah. And continue, Lord, to expand her ministry, Lord, wherever she goes, O oh God, hallelujah. May you continue, Lord, to use her mightily and effectively, Lord, in the ministry that you have entrusted to her, O oh God. Lord, once again, we give you glory, we give you honor in the life of our sister Diane. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Sister Diane. Praise God. Praise God, hallelujah. So, sumigaw po ng hallelujah yung mga pinagpala sa uh, hapong ito. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, we give you glory, Lord. Hallelujah. And let's all stand and close in prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Just close our eyes. Hallelujah. And just give thanks to God. Hallelujah. For what He has done hallelujah, tonight. And what, is, what He's about to do in our second part of our program. Hallelujah. The city ministry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again, O oh God. Hallelujah. For what we, you have done uh, this afternoon, O oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. For the presence of the Holy Spirit who minister to us, Lord. Hallelujah. And thank you. Hallelujah. That you speak profoundly, Lord. Hallelujah. Deep into our heart. Hallelujah. Of your word, of your message that has been imparted to us, O oh God. Hallelujah. And Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. That, Lord, your love endures forever, O oh God. Lord, no matter what circumstances that we're, we are in, Lord, no matter what challenges, no matter what trials, Lord, no matter what pandemics will come, O oh God. Hallelujah. Your love endures forever, O oh God. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. That you have uh, instilled that in our heart, O oh God. Hallelujah. And we continue to hold, Lord, on your promise. Hallelujah. For your enduring love, O oh God. Hallelujah. That you will never leave us nor forsake us, Lord. Hallelujah. And Lord, that's why this occasion, Lord, hallelujah, is not for us, but it's for you, Lord. Hallelujah. We just want to celebrate. We just want to give thanks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the enduring love that you have provided us, Lord. Especially in this ministry, oh God. Hallelujah. That for 14 years, Lord, you have sustained this church. Hallelujah. Lord, we don't know uh, your ways, Lord, because your, ha- your ways are higher than our ways and your thoughts are, ha- are higher than our thoughts, Lord. Hallelujah. And Lord, we, you, you just amaze us, Lord. Hallelujah. For uh, another year that you have added to this ministry, oh God. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for each one of us who are here, oh God. Hallelujah. Even Lord, our uh, co laborers from uh, JILGM who are present in this place. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Lord. Hallelujah for life. Uh, for being with us today uh, and celebrating your uh, goodness, Lord, hallelujah, with us. And Lord, we thank you for each one for our visitors who are first time to, uh, to uh, attend such a service, oh God, hallelujah. We pray, Lord, hallelujah, that the word that they heard, Lord, hallelujah, will uh, manifest in their heart, oh God, hallelujah. And Lord, one day they will testify that your love endures forever, oh God, hallelujah. Lord, once again, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise, hallelujah. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and everybody will say, Amen and Amen, hallelujah. God bless you all. We love you, Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. Just receive the, just uh, raise our hands, just raise our hands and receive the blessing from the Lord. Hallelujah. That is found in Psalms 121. Hallelujah. Verse 5 to 8. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. 
The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forever. Amen and amen. God bless you all.
Nating po muli niyo, mga katabi niyo, happy anniversary. Face bomb niyo po. Hallelujah. Ayun, so we will have a, um, snacks. Yan. Meron po tayong konting snacks sa likod before we start from in our city ministry. So why not we pray for the food? Father, we thank you for the food that we're going to partake this afternoon. Lord, may this be our nourishment. May this be our um, physical and spiritual strength as we go to the city ministry, Father. Lord, thank you for all the hands that you have used to prepare this food. And may, may we all enjoy the fellowship while we're having it. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Happy anniversary! Brothers and sisters in Christ, this is Sister A once again. Hindi ko po palalagpasin ang araw na ito dahil I want to greet my ANCF Church a happy 14th year anniversary. Miss na miss ko na po kayo. I just want you to know that I praise the Lord for His goodness, His faithfulness sa aking family dahil Through ANCF Church, dito ko po mas nakilala ang ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. At dito po ako nakabuo ng aking ministry through my brothers and sisters in Christ. So I praise Him for His love endures forever. Once again, happy 14th year anniversary, ANCF Church. God bless you all. Happy 14th year anniversary, ANCF Church. Thank you for enlightening our lives with the ray of hope, love, and compassion. I had always been grateful for instilling hope in me. God bless you all. God bless church. Thank you. In Christ, her and in NCF church, hallelujah. And congratulations to you all on attaining your 14th years of service in the body of Christ. As you mark many years of changing and touching lives, I want to join many people from across the nation who are wishing you, church, a happy anniversary. It is my prayer that may our loving God, who is in heaven, continue blessing you from one glory to another. You have sent His hand since an exception, and the goodness has fed you this far. Receive many blessings from me and my family, and God bless you all abundantly. Thank you, brothers and sisters in Christ. At mapagpalang pagbati sa inyo, aking mga kapatid, sa Across the Nation Christian Fellowship Happy 14th Anniversary. Patuloy na dumaloy ang pagpapala ng Diyos, ang pag-ibig ng Diyos, ang pagsama ng Diyos sa bawat isa sa inyo diyan sa Kingdom of Bahrain. Tulad nga ng nasusulat sa Aklat ng Kulosas, Guard yourself. Stand firm in the faith. Be a man and a woman of courage. Be strong in do everything in love do everything in love yes because our love our god is a god of love so we have to serve god with all of your uh, heart and with uh, full of love mga kapatid dyan sa Bahrain pagpalain po kayong lahat ng Diyos at patuloy na panghawakan ang kanyang mga pangako ang kanyang manat yang mga salita manatiling matatag sa inyong pananampalataya at patuloy na gumawa sa gawain ng Panginoon ng mayroong pag-ibig love one another walang complain walang uh, walang hinihingin kapalit but gagawin natin ito because of our love to our God Almighty Marami uh, masayang muli at uh, marami pang taon ang pagdidi- pagdiriwang ng anibersaryo ANCF Bahrain. Shalom, shalom, shalom to everyone of you. God and God bless you all. Happy anniversary ANCF Church. Uh, ako po yung nagpapasalamat at 
Ako'y nakilala ko kayong lahat at naging miyembro ako ng ating sambahan dyan sa Bahrain. At kayo po ay lagi kong ipinagdadasal na sana at ang panahon na tayo po ay magkita-kita pong muli. At ako po ay nagpapasalamat lalong-lalo na kina Pastor Al, kay Pastora Ami, na sana po ay kayo po ay talagang naging blessing sa akin. Mara, uh, I thanks God for everything na naka, nakilala ko po kayo at nagsilbing gabay po nung habang ako ay naandiyan sa Bahrain. It's really, really God. In, uh, the love of God is really endures forever. Maraming maraming pong salamat at miss you all. Happy anniversary po uli sa inyong lahat. God bless po sa inyo and uh, happy anniversary. I love you all. Bye-bye. Pagpalang umaga po sa inyong lahat, ako po ay bumabati sa inyo ng uh, 14th anniversary. At uh, ako po ay nagagalak na makita rin sa inyo. At uh, ang sarin po sa buong music team, uh, miss na kayo lahat. Salamat po sa inyong uh, pagpapangulak sa akin. At po na po ito kahit na, kahit na may exil lang po. Salamat po at God bless you all. Happy 14th anniversary! Happy 14th anniversary ANCF Church! At thank you po sa lahat ng ginawa ni Lord. Alam po natin, His love endures forever. And now po nandito po ako sa Pilipinas at nakasama ko po ang aking anak. At uh, kahit po ano po yung sitwasyon ng buhay, may ups and downs man. But the Lord, His love is laging nandyan. Hindi tayo pababayaan at lagi siya natin kasama sa araw-araw. So, once again, Happy 14th anniversary ANCF. God bless everyone. God bless. God bless. God bless. Happy anniversary ANCF Church. Nagpasasalamat ko sa Panginoon ang buhay ng bawat isa sa inyo. Sa lahat ng kabutihan na pinakita niyo sa akin. Isang patutuo na hindi sayang ang effort at ang bawat uh, ginagawa niyo sa sambahan ng Panginoon. Hindi man ako ganun kalalim bilang isang Kristiyano sa ngayon, pero ang mga tinuro at tinanim niyo sa akin ay nagagamit ko sa aking araw-araw na pamumuhay dito sa Australia kung paano makitungo sa kapwa-tao sa mga decision making ko dalangin ko na pagkaluuban pa kayo ng Panginoon ng marami pang gift at talent para sa kanyang kapurihan God bless you all PNC at Bahrain Happy, happy 14th years anniversary Happy Anniversary, ANCF Bahrain. God bless you all. We miss you and we love, love you. you all. Bye-bye. Hello everyone. A blessed 14th years of God's faithfulness, my ANCF Bahrain family. Happy, happy anniversary to all of us. I thank God because I found a church and a family during my journeys in Bahrain. I thank God because through ENCF, I was shaped, molded, motivated, and I grew up little by little spiritually. Thank you also to all of you who are always by my side. God knows who you are. To our dear pastors, to all the ministry leaders, to my ladies group, Paul and John, to the Bible studies where I belong, Thank you to all of you, to each and every one of you who are always with me during my ups and downs. God knows who you are. Again, happy, happy anniversary, ENC Church, the church and the family where I belong. Malayo man ako sa inyo sa ngayon, pero nandito kayo lagi sa puso ko. Surely, I will miss you all. Praise God to the life of my uh, brothers and sisters there in Bahrain. Thank you, Lord, for your uh, faithfulness and... Uh, Continue to use them, Father God, as an uh, instrument of uh, soul winning in that uh, place in Bahrain. So, salamat po sa buhay niyo dyan, mga kapatid, at uh, naging bahagi din po ako ng evangelism evangel uh, ministry. At uh, tayong dalangin po namin na patuloy pa po palagalap ang mabuting balita dyan sa Middle East, kung saan ay... Uh, Mahirap na magpalaganap dyan, baka alam po namin na nandyan kayo 
ang mga kapatid ko dyan sa Across the Nation Christian Fellowship. Amen. Salamat po muli, Lord, sa buhay ng lahat ng mga pastors dyan sa ANCF. Uh, kung saan eh, patuloy mo silang uh, ginagamit, Lord. Uh, patuloy pa po silang, uh, silang gamitin na maging uh, magpapala dyan sa lugar na yan. Kaya kami po dito sa Australia, ay, uh, kami po ay bumabati sa inyo ng Blessed and happy for me. Brethren in Christ, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How are you? A blessed anniversary to all members and families of Across the Nation Christian Fellowship. In behalf of my family, we are happy that ANCF is faithfully and truthfully fulfilling the mandate of the Lord Jesus Christ to go and make disciples. We have really been blessed and richly rewarded in areas of our fellowship, worship, discipleship, ministry, sharing the gospel, and in church mission. May the grace of God be upon us all and His enduring love continue flowing through us. May we persevere as witnesses of the gospel of Christ and of the Lord's mighty moving in ANCF as we gather together and exalt Him with our praises. We rejoice that ANCF is celebrating another anniversary. May His grace abound all the more as the Holy Spirit empower and guide our brethren is spiritually strong in all season of tests and even in this pandemic. God bless each one in the work of mission and ministry. Glory to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for adding another year to ANCF. We want to rejoice together for what the Lord has done to all of you. Stay blessed and God be with you. And this is what Apostle Paul says in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. Now all glory to God, who is able through His mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to Him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. and sisters in Christ. This is Sister A once again. Hindi ko po palalagpasin ang araw na ito dahil I want to greet my ANCF Church a happy 14th year anniversary. Miss na miss ko na po kayo. I just want you to know that I praise the Lord for His goodness.